Look, there's more new releases than that time Houdini went to the zoo. I'm Matthew, and welcome to the Watch It Played News. Normally, I jump to rapid fire news at the end of the show, but there's no time for that. It's already started. And up first is some big Spirit Island news from Greater Than Games. With the brand new one to three player Horizons of Spirit Island, a totally standalone game. Horizons of Spirit Island features the core mechanisms of the very popular Spirit Island, but features a new double sided game board and five new spirits designed to be ideal for those playing a Spirit Island game for the first time. Essentially, this is a more user friendly and lighter version of the game designed to introduce a system and gaming in general to a wider audience which is why in the US it's a Target exclusive because Target specifically asked them to make it. The price point is also going to be pretty accessible at $30 and it's releasing in October and the five spirits included are compatible with the core original game. Also compatible with this core original game, that's a good segue, is this episode's sponsor, Legendary Black Panther, the 29th expansion for the Legendary series. T'Challa, the rightful king of Wakanda and world famous Avenger, is leading the Wakandan royal family and their incredible allies into the world of Legendary in this newest Legendary expansion, Legendary Black Panther. This 100 card expansion includes five fearless heroes, two masterminds and a variety of villain groups, plus players can work both with or against each other to defeat the masterminds. All 100 cards included in this expansion feature original artworks so join Black Panther, Storm and more in the fight against the new schemes with skill testing keywords for a whole new game experience. Follow the link in this video's description to find Legendary Black Panther, which is available now at your local friendly gaming store and, of course, upperdeckstore.com. Okay, continuing on, Direwolf have announced the second Dune Imperium expansion of 2022. Second, with Immortality, where the Bene Prelax, yep, those guys, advance their own agenda by trading in genetic innovations, where you hire face dancer spies to unmatch skill, regrow damaged tissue and organs, or dare to employ people restore to life of Golas, all while you make shadowy deals with the Tleilaxu to harvest genetic specimens and unlock the potential of scientific research by grafting cars together to empower your agents. It's pretty evident that I don't know what any of that means, and I apologise, but I liked my play of the base game and the Rise of Ix expansion was very well received, so more Doom Imperium has to be exciting. With a new research track to unlock powerful new abilities and a new graft keyword that allows you to play two cards in a single agent turn, only the benefits of both? It looks exciting, so look out for that in a couple of months. The four player only Deal With The Devil was announced by CGE, which is promised to be a deeply thematic competitive Euro game set in a fancy medieval era where each of the four players takes on a secret role of a mortal, a cultist, or even the devil, Bagsy playing the devil or whatever your colloquial term for Bagsy is, where you're from, dibs or something. But due to the asymmetrical roles, players experience the same game, but with very different game goals, which is what I imagine being in a relationship is like. There's a lot going on here with the secret roles, tempting deals, the Inquisition, or while you city build, deduce and vote while keeping your secrets and strategies hidden. This looks incredibly interesting. I have to try it. I'm looking forward to when it releases around PAX Unplugged in December. I need to speed up. We have like 20 more announcements to get through. The wonderful Cora Quest is getting an expansion. This one to four player family dungeon crawler from Bright Eye Games is whimsical as heck and in Cora Quest keep on questing, players are now able to level up your heroes between adventures and also keep treasure from one adventure to another, as well as the addition of two full campaigns, the Curse of Hudders and a Spotter's Guide to the Dungeon. Each campaign contains five new adventures to play through, so I'm really happy about that. Race to the Raft is the latest game in the Isle of Cats universe from the City of Games where one to four players will race to a raft, I'm assuming, in this cooperative social puzzle game where you take on the role of the inhabitants of the Isle of Cats, which is on fire. And the cat's last chance to escape is a small raft located on the other side of the island, which will take teamwork to reach as you make your way through the smoke sometime next year. Deep Print Games are bringing us the one to four player Caldera Park, a sequel to last year's Savannah Park, which I did predict would win the Spiel des Jahres Award and didn't. 
but I'm okay with being publicly incorrect, okay? In fact, I like it. Who says I don't? I just really loved Savannah Park, so I'm happy for the sequel set in the wilderness of North America, where your task is to group animals of the same species together in families as large as possible, but large families are only half the battle, as to score a lot of points, they also need access to watering holes and must avoid bad weather. This is another bingo style game where players announce a tile that everyone has to deal with that tile on their board in the best way possible. And Caldera Park is being pinned as a great next step for anyone who enjoyed Savannah Park and is out later this year. The Great Split is by Horrible Guild and will have two to seven players drafting cards to collect riches such as gems, gold, artwork and tomes. Precious, precious tomes. Adding them to your collection to make yours the most prestigious. And as the name suggests, it's a grand I split you choose style game, which is really what made me interested in it. You have some loot, you divide it up with the player on your left chooses which pile they want, while the player on your right gives you a similar decision. Depending on how each player builds their collection, different riches will take on different values, such as art prices changing as the game goes on, making your choices more devious as your play progresses. This looks fantastic to me. I love the style and the twist here. So I'll tell you now, I am trying this game. Spaceship Unity is the two to four player Pegasus Spiel title. And this looks just cool as all get out because its tagline is, Spaceship Unity takes gaming to a whole new level, transforming your home into a spaceship. It's very intriguing. As recruits of the Interplanetary Alliance, players experience a story full of action and adventure and have to steer their own spaceship with like the fan or a plate turning it into a jet engine or your blinds or a protective shield. The bookshelf is now a diplomatic database and a very much mean real household items. So I'm very curious about this. And as in a TV series, the story continues over several episodes, five in this case, with multiple chapters and branching story paths for a different experience. And just like in real life, the story keeps going no matter how the crew performs. So expect Spaceship Unity season 1.1 later this year with season 1.2 next year. Plaid Hat Games are bringing us the one to four player Hickory Dickory, where players control a team of mice competing in a royal scavenger hunt hosted by Lord Cuckoo, obviously, where you as mice will ride on a cuckoo clock's minute hand, searching for items that match the hunt cards that you have. But of course, once the clock strikes midnight, the hunt is over and you'll have to present your scavenger hunt cards and show how well you've done and you're awarded berries according to the rows and columns you've completed. There's yet more undaunted news with Osprey's announcement of Undaunted Battle of Britain, which is just tailor-made for me, I tell you, as it pits the RAF against the Luftwaffe during the summer of 1940, which Brian Adams criminally overlooked in my opinion. This is a standalone game in the Undaunted series, adapting the core gameplay of the previous titles to recreate dynamic dogfighting of aerial combat. Just yes. Just yes to this. Corey Konichka's latest unexpected game from Unexpected Games is 3000 Scoundrels, which in the classic Mansions of Madness designer style has a wild premise with the tagline, the traveler brought much change to our small frontier town in the last five years. He showed us marvels beyond imagination and taught us how to use his strange machines. Now that the traveler has vanished, a storm is coming. Who will control the destiny of the American frontier. Ooh. Players assume the roles of rival leaders attempting to steal precious technology left behind by said traveler, and by overlaying clear cards, they create unique scoundrels and use them to outsmart their foes via some dirty rotten bluffing. And this two to four player game looks ace and will be out later this year. There's so many more announcements, please send help. Stranger Things, you like that show? Great, come on, and legacy game inventor Rob Davio have teased a cooperative game where the players have to work together to save the town of Hawkins from the Upside Down called, unsurprisingly, Stranger Things Upside Down, which is better than Stranger Things Inside Out, I'm sure. You like Wordle? Boom, Hasbro announced Wordle the party game. How about Ozark and Squid Game? Boom, got you covered with Mixlaw announcing Walmart exclusives of games based on both of those IPs. In Squid Game for three to six players, you have a personal team to compete against the teams of your opponents. 
through bluff, luck, and also what's being described as tough tactics to ensure you survive six card games based on the deadly rounds from this series. And in Ozark, for two to five players, all we know is that, just like the television show, it's all about money laundering in this territory control game where each player's faction must control various locations from the series and try to end up with the most money at the end. Bitewing games are doing two things I'm very excited about. First, they have Trailblazers, where one to eight adventurers will create the longest hiking, biking, and kayaking paths by the ageless medium of tile laying. Where the catch is that you can't get lost as you always have to find your way back to camp and you only score points for paths that begin and end at matching colored campsites. It looks very fun and is utterly charming. And of course, they're also doing what I love more than anything else which is some Knizia news. Bitewing already beautifully printed three Knizia games with their Criminal Capers collection, which I'm very excited about receiving in the post just as soon as is physically possible, with Soda Smugglers, Hot Lead, and Pew Mafiosi. But their latest announcement made me real happy because it's Zoo Vardis, a reprint of this game, Quo Vardis. Hold on. This game, Quo Vardis from 1991, which is a great game about negotiating your way through rooms as you attempt to progress to the end of the paths to get the most points. But the whole time, while you need to work together, you know, you just know for sure that eventually everyone is getting stabbed in the back. You're gonna get stabbed in the back. It's just, I mean, it's a guarantee. Zoo Vardis, which is coming to Kickstarter early next year, revamps things with art by Quan Chai Moria, an improved three-player game, new neutral bribable peacocks, it's zoo themed, widening the player count up to seven players as well as new asymmetrical abilities, new bonus tokens, and of course, chunky animal figures. It looks great, so I'm very excited. Spiel des Jahres winners, flat out games have a na hold on, Cascadia by the way. Cascadia won the Spiel des Jahres Award, well done them. Also, as I mentioned, the, the incredible game Living Forest won the Kenner Spiel, which is another game that I absolutely love. But anyway, Flat Out have announced Point City, a sequel to the wonderful hit game Point Salad, which I lent to my friend Beth now, I think about it. Not important. In Point City, you're drafting cards similar to the original Point Salad, but you're building a city, and as such, there's a little more going on with resource management and engine building aspects. But gosh, if I'm not excited for it when it's out next year. And finally, <sighs> Something a little different is on Kickstarter right now, and that's Board Game Day, which is written by Almy Valdez from the Board Game Blitz podcast and illustrated by Rachel Kramer from the Semi Corp Internet comic. And they've teamed up to create Board Game Day, a 16 page fully illustrated children's book. The game follows a group of friends, two pandas, a cat, a bird, and an octopus as they prepare for and have a board game day. The illustrations include many actual children's games, so the kid might recognize them, and I think this is a lovely project to finish on. And that's the news. For even more board games, you can click here to find Chaz's list of 20 new game releases and restocks, and we'll see you over there.